the lawn. Anyway, this is shed two. Um, got an XC, I think it is, XC Ute here, I think. Um, old man was just using it for parts, this one. You can see it doesn't look too flash. So I'm missing most of the parts. Alright, then here I think this one is a XBGS. It is a genuine GS. Uh, 302 Cleveland. Um, and as you can tell, it is fairly rusty. There's actually not much car left at all. So I don't know what my old man's plan is with this one. If he's going to fabricate all new panels for it or who knows. It's definitely seen better days. I'm pretty sure he said it was matching numbers engine. Right, then, uh, this would be shed three here. And we'll walk back outside. Well, here's a cut here. I think that was an XC. That one once upon a time. She's used it used it for different cuts. Right, so yeah, this one here is shed three. Alright, so this is shed three. Uh, we've got a few different cars here. So this is a 50, 59 Ford Ranchero. I think it's a 59. Um, I did actually start doing the bodywork on this thing. It would have been about six or seven years ago now. Um, my old man was paying me to do it. Um, I never got around to finish it, finishing it because we moved away. So that's that. It's got the big white walls on it. Uh, this one does have a little 289 Windsor in it. Uh, but yeah, there's not really much on the body that actually needs needs finishing. Uh, obviously all the interior needs to be redone. It's still a full resto. All the parts are in the back there. Various different parts. Got the big white walls down here, which were very new probably 10 years ago when we went to America to get it. Um, and then this is my other 1964 Lincoln. This is the good one. Uh, it has no rust pretty much anywhere. Um, I bought it out of America probably 10 years ago, maybe even a little bit longer. Um, I think I paid like 1500 US for it. It was pretty cheap. Uh, also come with a whole bunch of receipts so I bought it from uh, a panel shop and basically the guy that was getting the car done stopped paying his bill so in America you can legally sell sell someone's product if they haven't been paying their bill uh, I think it's six months time I've got uh, but here's the side that I've done a bit of bodywork on it I've cut out so it did have door poppers in it and the door handles were shaved uh, I put that back to how they meant to be, uh, cut the holes back out and, and bought new handles for it. Uh, but yeah, this one's got a rebuilt 430 cubic inch uh, MEL motor, Mercury Edsel Lincoln. Um, the factory colour is like a cream. The cream colour, it's meant to be all leather, cream interior. Uh, but yeah, it's got rebuilt engine, diff, gearbox and yeah most of the suspension rubbers and all that they're all brand new well 10 years ago so that's that that's my project that's probably still going to be a long time away and then we got an XR Fairmont here XR Fairmont uh, which is my old man's can't really tell you much about it. We do have a little 289 for it. Um, but yeah, that will be getting done up probably in the next 
six months, my old man will probably take that one home and restore that and then sell it. So that is an XR Fairmont. Uh, this is an XBGT, which is a friend's car. Um, and then, yeah, we've got various parts sitting around ED, ED Falcon Bonnet. There's an old XE, E or D bonnet there. Someone's cut out in the middle. Uh, but yeah, we did used to work in these sheds. Uh, probably last time we worked out of here was five, six years ago. And yeah, all we did was restorations. And basically, yeah, it was me, my dad and my brother that, that did all the work. Uh, and we basically all just went out separate ways. And we've all, yeah, moved away from this little little country town. All right, so then we go into shed four. We've got some more cars in here. That's what's that, ED, XR, wheels. Oh, that giant pool table I've still got. That was from the house at Gold Coast. That's actually a very nice pool table. It has been sitting here now for probably 10 years. Right here we've got some more Falcons. This one's got a V8, factory V8 car. XB. So Falcon, I don't know, what's that? Third JG34. And we've got another one over here. Blue one. If you can't tell, we are we are Ford fans, the whole family. So a couple XBs, we've got a custom line here. Which my old man did he actually bought that in Harvey Bay and towed it back. Another XB, XA. Another. So that's 67 Falcon, we've got another one. Small lounges from the house. Alright, so just being informed, this one is an XB Fairmont, matching numbers, uh, V8. So probably another one on the list that will get done up one day. Uh, at the moment, I think my old man's working on a couple customer cars. A HJ panel van and a XY Falcon for a guy. And this one here, he just says this one's a matching numbers as well. XB, apparently it's a good coded car, so maybe interior color or something's good. Uh, factory blue. Uh, and then this one over here, that's all rusty in the front, that's an XR. Not sure if it's a V8 or a 6. Might be able to see through this hole. No, there's no engine. Oh no, there's an engine in there. Um, let's say it's a 6. I can't really see in there. Alright, so that's this shed. And we'll go to the next one. Make sure I might show you this fair lane here, NA fair lane. Uh, my old man was driving this not long ago. And he gave it a quick quick respray just to bring it up. Bring it up to a sort of factory spec. Uh, it is just an NA so it doesn't have that plush. Uh, they're locked. That plush interior's just got the almost like a GLI type interior. It's a bit strange for a fair lane. But it is actually in very good condition. Anyway, last time he came out here, he was using this as his tow car. Last time he came out here, um, he turned it off and it wouldn't start again. So we had a look at the couple basic things, which is usually coil or the dizzy on these things. Um, he did change the dizzy, still wouldn't go. And for some reason he didn't change the coil because he couldn't get to it properly. So that's probably all it is, the coil. He ended up changing the computer in it, changed a couple other things, couldn't get it going. And I said, did you change the coil? He goes, nah, it was too hard to get to, so he gave up on it. So he deregistered it, and it's been sitting here probably three or four months now. It's probably actually not a bad one for someone to buy. Probably an easy, easy fix. 
All right, this shed here is pretty much vacant. Uh, they did have this one rented out. Someone was renting out. Uh, I don't know what they were doing in here. Uh, but this one is a friend's Z. Uh, I'm not really up with the fair lane. Z. ZG. I don't know someone might be able to correct me. ZG fair lane. V8 351. Uh, it was sitting outside and someone has sold the gearbox out of it apparently I haven't looked at it but yeah someone sold the gearbox out of it so it's been pushed in here um, and we tried to get in contact with an old friend and I think pretty sure he was told to pick it up but it's still sitting here now we also did have I don't think it was in this shed it was in the sh last shed that I was just in we did have three Monaros in there, HK, TG, Monaros. Uh, that some guy was storing them here, never paid his bill. And my old man said, if you don't get them out, we're gonna sell them. So he finally come around and picked them up. I don't know if he fixed up his bill or not. But yeah, they're gone now. And then shed six. It's got a few other things. A couple motors here. A couple Windsors. Uh, I think they're both 260s. Yep, 260s. Um, there is Ford parts, got crap everywhere. Couple of mufflers there. And then we've got an EB XR8. Which my old man bought up at Bundaberg and he paid two grand for it. This was a couple of years ago now. Uh, haven't had it running. Someone's Someone's moulded a XR8, BAXR8 bulge onto it. As you can see, it hasn't been done properly because it's cracked and it's, it's lifting. Uh, it's just an auto. It is definitely an XR8. We've done the checks on it. Uh, yeah, it's pretty rough. It's definitely seen better days, but you know, these things are going up in value, so they're worth even in this condition they're worth they're worth picking up so yeah it is fairly rough I think it's cobalt blue I think that's what they call this colour um, see if the bonnet no the bonnet's not open now the, the little intake pipe that I've got on my 64 Lincoln back at home uh, actually the manifold sorry the, the manifold and the elbow that is actually off this car so now this actually has an AU uh, lower and upper manifold on it and throttle body, but we haven't had a run. <coughs> um, old man did tell me what this thing was. It is a Triumph R3, 1960, little panel van thing. It's a bit funny looking. Um, but yeah, apparently worth, worth good money, so that's why he's got it. And what else we got? We've got various panels here, Mustang panels, Falcon panels, a few Mustang doors, some roof cut there off something. Um, some old wire wheels, it would have come off one of the cars from America. My parents did used to import American cars, uh, they probably did it for 15 years. And they'd usually bring anywhere from 8 to 16 cars back at a time. Uh, and I think the last time they went, yeah, it was probably, probably 10 years ago now. Uh, but this is one of the cars that's left. Doesn't look like much, which is a, I'm pretty sure it's a 60, 67 or 68 Mustang convertible. Um, which I think they've got brand new quarter panels and stuff for this one. So it looks, it looks pretty bad, but once you've got all the new panels there and you weld them on, they turn out pretty good. Uh, now I think these are XB, XC utes. So another two. Another two utes here. And then another Fairmont. A Ford Fairmont. So yeah, there's a few getting around. Uh, and then we've got this little go-kart. 
Go kart here. Yeah, what's it got? Oh, it looks like it's got one of those little pit bike motors on it. I think the old man built this at home for the kids to, for his grandkids to run around on. It's pretty long. It's a bit, it's a bit funny to ride, but it does go right. Uh, what else we got? Another Mustang bonnet. What's that? 69 or a 70 Mustang bonnet. XP Falcon door. Uh, the Cortina door over there. Did have lots of Cortina parts here. So I did have a Mark 1 a few years ago. Yeah, so that's this shed. And then we've still got the first shed. And then all this crap outside will go through. We'll go back up here to the first shed. Alright, so here's the first shed. And we're here to pick up this. XR panel van, my old man wants to fix it up and use it for his business, for his panel beating. So yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool van, so it's got potential. Uh, I think this one's only six, yep, the old six in it. And that one's locked down as well. Yeah, so the old XR, bench seat. Needs a bit of work, like they all do. And there you go out in the back there. Actually doesn't look too bad. I mean, got a bit of damage here. Actually, the body doesn't look, look too bad, really. It's got a bit of rust. Same worse. Couple bits of damage around it. Alright, then we've got another, another falcon here. So an XB Fairmont. And then we've got an XC. I don't know what this one is. XC. It's just a six cylinder. It's a bit dark in here to see properly. Uh, and that one there, XD uh, panel van, Sundowner. Yeah, factory 302 V8. It's his genuine Sundowner. So yeah, they were doing up, me and my brother, no, sorry, my dad and my brother were doing that up years ago. Uh, but yeah, stopped working on it for some odd reason. Yeah, that is factory V8, 302 Sundowner, XD. So that's sort of like the equivalent to the Sandman panel van, the Holden. Uh, but yeah, the Ford version. And there's the original sticker there on the back. So that is the Sundowner sticker. And I'm pretty sure they went down a quarter panel as well. Sundowner sticker. Right, let's have a look on this side, see what's on this side. Yeah, there we go, there's the sticker on this side. So sun, Sundowner. So it would have been a pretty cool van back in the day. I don't really get anything like that anymore. So yeah, they want to rip that out soon and, and actually get stuck into it and, and get some money for it. And this one, I think he said was a XT GT. I think. Could be wrong. But yeah, from memory, that's what he told me. It was a genuine, genuine XT? XR. XT GT, I think. So yeah, 289. I think you said I had in it. Uh, and then what's this? Just an XF. Nothing special. And it's got the old wood grain. Oh, it's a manual. Wood grain and a manual. And it's got, what's this? EF seats. Someone chucks some EF or AU. I don't know what they are. Seats in the front. Oh, it looks like it's a Fairmont. Yeah, that's a Fairmont back. This one's a Fairmont, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's a Fairmont back seat. That's Fairmont, isn't it? Yeah, so it's probably a Fairmont, just a six cylinder. Uh, I think you said it had a hot motor in it. Switch tractors on it. And uh, door trim engine covers. You know, the old factory door trim engine covers. 
Uh, has it got a carby, big carby on it? No, that's factory. Factory, oh yeah, carby's been ripped off. And the rocker cover. Uh, and then I think this one's a 59 Studi Baker. Studi Baker Hawk. GT. I think, could be wrong. Mm, dash is a bit different in this one. Then we'll go for a quick walk around the outside and we'll have a look back. Alright, so this is some of the outside stuff. Uh, this is my brother's ED XR6. was turboed. Uh, was, was a daily driver for a while. And he's sort of aquaplaned off the road one night. Tidy car back on the road. Fiberglass body kit and that on it. An S. Yeah, about three, 350 to the wheels, 300, 350, somewhere around there, I'd say. Uh, it had a J3 chip in it, which are pretty, oh, I reckon they're pretty crap. And some people have, some people have uh, done pretty well with them. Yeah, he ended up, I think the motor blew up as well, but he hit, doesn't look like there's much damage on it, but all the sill under here, that's all pushed in. Yeah. He could have just fixed it, but probably had something else on the road anyway, so he didn't really worry about it. There's that, this XF Ute, EFI, most of the stuff outside was just for um, parts, parts cars. So I don't know what this one was originally bought for. I see someone had a scoop on it at one point. Uh, yeah, just a crappy XF Ute. So EF seats in it, someone's put in it. It'll be a long time before we got it. Uh, so I got a manual, auto. So I've got an auto. Uh, this Ute over here, this was. I bought this one for five, five hundred bucks or a thousand, a fair few years ago now. Uh, and the reason I bought it was for the Windsor, which is in my 64 Lincoln. So yeah, it did have a fairly big hit in the front. Uh, it did have a big giant ball bar on it, which sort of makes it look not as bad as what it is. Um, but yeah, I ended up wrecking this out. I sold the ball bar for like 500. Uh, it had an aluminium tray on it. I think I got 700 for that. So pretty much the motor cost me nothing. There's that and another Ute over here. Another XF. What's this one? Yeah, XF as well. What's this 250 cross flow on the ground? Nothing fancy, probably bought for parts. Yeah, so the red X. Okay. Yeah, I wonder if you still got the motor. Yeah, still got the motor in there. Uh, FG Ute. This is a XR6, I think. Ute. Which I think my brother bought this one just for the tub. Basically just a roller. Well, it was a roller. Uh, XC, I think this one. XC Ute. As you can see, it's had bits chopped out of it. Floor pans have been chopped out. So another parts car. Mm, got a motor. Yeah, probably a 250 or a 200. More likely 250. Uh, Ford Econo van, I think they call this one. Like a 70 something. Nice and rusty. We pulled the motor out of this. I think it had a 302 in it. Uh, Windsor. I can't remember now. Pulled it. What did we pull that out for? I can't remember what we pulled that out for. 
It looks like it's got pretty good bumpers on it. The front bumper looks pretty good. Look at that. So that was an actual bus, a passenger vehicle. Got no rear bar on it. Now this heap of junk. I bought this a fair while ago now. It's been sitting for a long time. It was my daily driver. Um, I had a 66 Mustang 4 litre that I had for about, 4 litre turbo that I had for about 10 years. Uh, and I was after a change. And for some reason I bought this. I thought it would be a good thing. So anyway, the motor come out of the Mustang, the 4 litre and the turbo went into this, because this, this one did actually blow up. The original 3.5 litre blew up. Um, and yeah, so at the moment it's got a single cam block in it, because I pulled the head off and a T5 5 speed in it with a button clutch and that I mean it's got Falcon pedals there, Falcon uh, brake and clutch um, actually the interior still looks pretty good considering how long it's been sitting what's the clutch feel like? Oh, it still feels like it did <laughs> that's amazing but yeah this is uh, probably just go to the dump zone I might rip the 5 speed out yeah, it actually feels pretty good. Yeah, that doesn't feel too bad, really. So yeah, this has a 4 litre EL block in it. Um, I think by the time I stopped driving it, the bottom end was pretty cactus. It'd been about 10 years in the Mustang. Turbo making about 400 to the wheels. Uh, with an old EMS Stinger computer controlling it all. How do these open? I forget, it's been that long. And there we go, it just slides forward. And then we open up. And there we have it, the 4 litre uh, EL block, which is definitely no good anymore. Uh, I did rebuild this when it went into the Mustang. Um, it's got EA pistons in it, so for lower compression. I thought back when I did it, everyone was going low compression with their turbos um, these days it doesn't seem to really matter because of the how easy it is to get better fuels like E85 and stuff like that uh, yeah so 4 litre EL motor 3.9 EA pistons that were oversized uh, it was bored and honed and all that crap just a stock bottom end uh, in, in the Mustang it was yeah at the end before I pulled out I was running about 16 pound boost 16 to 17 out of my old cam and yeah and GD40 eBay GD445 turbo on it yeah so eventually this will just go to the scrap and I'll probably pull the gearbox out of it and use it for another project yeah that's that it's an 89 735 BMW probably the worst driving car I've ever had it needed some work actually I think the back back uh, shockies I put Falcon ones in it because the BMW ones were like triple the price so yeah been sitting for a long time still got the original mags there in the back Over here, there's just an EL Fairmont, I think it was. This was a guy who used to hang around a bit when we, when we were all meeting here. And there's an older fella, probably on the pension, living in a caravan. And he bought this, I think, from Car Yard. And then his nephew rear ended him. So I got pulled off the road. And this thing, he spent a lot of money on this car all the suspension and all that, he went through everything. Any noise that he, he heard, he had it back at a mechanic shop and getting it fixed. Um, this had a, well, I think a 60, 70,000 kilometer motor put in it when he got it. Well, he actually did it. So it's actually probably got not a bad motor for a conversion if you're into those single cams. They do turbo pretty well, but yeah, there's the damage. His nephew hit him in a v, VN wagon, I think and uh, broke both cars off. So it's probably not a bad motor to get actually in the, in the gearbox. And then what have got here? X 
M, XP, I can't remember now. Wagon, I can't remember if we cut the front off or something or. No, yeah, this has been sitting here, sitting here for a long time. Uh, sorry about the wind, guys, if you can't hear properly. No, yeah, as you can see, the front's gone off that one. And yeah, she's pretty rusty. Probably another one go with the scrap. Uh, so this place is actually up for sale. Here's a sort of a better view of the whole property. I think it's an acre all up. So it goes over there, the fence is over there, near that shed there, the neighbour's shed. And then yeah, all the way. It's actually a pretty good block. Quite nice grass growing around, some trees. And then I think our shed, or my parents' shed, is 60, 60 metres by 12. And then yeah, most of them have walls up in, in between, so they're, they're 10 by 12 each or something, or 11 by 12. And this one here was an XR5 Turbo Focus that I'd bought um, and realised it was just too much to fix. So I ended up buying another one, another one that needed uh, I think it needed an engine or something, so I did some swap roos on some parts. Yeah, that'll go to the crusher. Uh, here's another FG Ute tub, this has been used for, for steel storage panels, probably go to scrap. And then we've got a Ford Prefect, I think it's a 48 or a 49 model. My old man had plans of putting a 200 or 250 crossflow in it. Uh, but yeah, not sure what, what the go is with that anymore, it's been sitting here for a long time. Ford Prefect. Here, tyres and stuff to dump. It's like XR5 rear spark. Um, FG doors, BA doors sitting there. Um, XM P door. It's got some Rover. I think they're Rover quarter panels. Um, what else we got? Yeah, just a whole heap of stuff, exhaust, and it's all pretty much junk. Uh, more focused stuff there, XR5, BA Ute, mm, which I probably should try and, the last time I was here I looked for some parts for the, the XR8, but the parts that I want aren't here. Mm, looks like someone's put an FG XR seat into it, if you can see that. This one looks like a BA one still, actually that's the same trim as mine, same colour. Hmm, if I had a driver's door trim, I'd be taking that, but there's none there. And the last car out here is, oh, there's two more. Is my, well, this is my old NC Fairlane. That I only bought for like a business car sort of thing. Pretty, pretty bad choice. Uh, but only because I had a, a single cam in it and I had all the parts there to, to the turbo this. So yeah, basically this thing here, uh, we had a workshop at Gatton for a while and I, I'd bought a dyno before we moved there and I was, you know, learning to tune and do all that type of stuff. Um, and this was sort of a test, test pig, uh, which got the old computer out of the Mustang in it, or out of, from the, the crappy BMW there, the EMS Stinger, uh, they got the same GD45 turbo on it. It got the AU head whacked on it, which I had on the Mustang. Uh, AU head with a custom ground Camtech cam. I think it was like a 230, 240 duration cam. Um, steam pipe manifold. And the exhaust went straight out the bonnet here. As you can see, the whole lot of cut out. And yeah, basically whacked all this stuff on in a day. Um, and tuned it that day and it made 470 to the wheels on about 17 pound boost. So it wasn't too bad anyway. That I only did it because I was having a, a dyno day for uh, the Falcon E-Series e group, Brisbane E-Series, I think they were called. And they hit me up, said, do you want to do a dyno day? And I said, yeah, why not? So I thought I would quickly put this together just to, I don't know, to have something of my own for the dyno day. And yeah, I ended up winning 
because there was no other there was no other turbo cars and it was all just NA pretty much NA sixes and a couple V8s, five liters. And yeah, they only all made around 200, 180 to about 220, and mine made 470 on the day. So I ended up winning my own my own day. And yeah, and then the last one here, the next F wagon Ute. I think this one was just bought for parts. Um, yeah, not much to it. But that's about it. Now most of the stuff here is for sale, apart from probably my Lincoln. I don't want to sell that. Um, but yeah, if any anyone's seen anything they like, hit me up. Uh, I can ask my old man and see if he's got a price for you. And also, this whole property is, is for sale. I think they've got about three fifty, four hundred thousand on it. Um, yeah, so it is actually a pretty good spot. Well, it's not the best spots in a small country town. It's about 40, 40 minutes from Toowoomba and about 40 minutes from Warwick. So sort of in the centre of these of the two bigger towns. And then, yeah, here we go. We've got the XR panel van loaded up. Ready to go. So this one's just going to go back to my parents' house. Um, and, yeah, my old man, I think my mum's actually going to start bare metalling it. And then uh, they'll get stuck into doing all the rust repairs on it and bodywork and, and getting it painted. So yeah, I mean, it's got pretty cool potential. I don't know if they're going to keep the windows in it or are they going to weld them up. I couldn't tell you. Um, but yeah, that's that's about it for this video. Got the trusty old XR8 still ticking along. Uh, I think it's now got 303,000 Ks on it. The motor still seems pretty good. I uh, did check the oil before I left and it was pretty much empty, so I have to top top that up. Uh, obviously I just drive it too hard and it likes to chew through the oil. So I'll probably do another oil, oil change on it soon and then yeah, that'll be it. Uh, anyway guys, that's pretty much it for this video. just want to give you a bit of an update of what's been going on. Uh, I do want to get back into doing videos soon. Uh, yeah, having a little tiny garage to work out is pretty hard when I'm used to working out of something, you know, like this. I was spoilt for a few years, working out of sheds like this, um, and try and find it hard to work out of a little little house, house garage. So, next on the list, I think we need to build a shed in, in the backyard. Alright guys, thanks for listening, and we'll see you later.